So the conversation on uh, the art of media and the return of the art of media and also what is mass media today uh, came from a conversation I was having with Josh. And uh, you know, I said, I think for the first time in a few years, I feel like I'm back to the art of media and what we're really meant to do and that bridge of, of art and science. And um, some of the examples that came up from that is um, mass media is some, in some cases today, just a, a channel waiting to happen. So if you think about the uh, going to New York, I've been to New York 40 times, right? I've walked through that bull in Wall Street 40 times. I never really thought of it as a latent channel just waiting to happen for mass media, but somebody did. And it didn't take off until Fearless Girl was put in front of it. And you think about how many people have heard about that story and what that is, it was able to do for the State Street brand and for McCann. Uh, but what did that brief look like? And, and what were the success metrics? And how did they define whether it was working after it launched? And how did they measure the return on advertising spend? Um, but also, as things have shifted, the, that message morphs over time. So that it's now part of a work of art for the city of New York, that it's not considered a temporary installment. It's there permanently, which means that it was also there last month when they had a, a $5 million settlement for State Street um, uh, for unfair compensation to women. So <clears throat> it's there it sits. And I think the, we've talked a lot in the past about portability and what having a message be on your mobile device does, but what about how context changes with culture? And those are things that we all need to think about. And I think uh, social media and the responsiveness of the masses has also changed what mass is and has changed a message. So maybe you weren't all that upset when you looked at the Pepsi commercial the first time, but as you started to see it through the eyes of people of color, as you started to see it through the eyes of people who had been in police violence, maybe you got angry, but maybe not the first time. So, um, you know, it was, it was a conversation about some of those things, um, also about willingness to fail. We talk about failing fast and testing and AB culture and um, ensuring that you've got an innovation budget. But what does that really look like and how does that really feel? And on my way to the airport, I actually changed what I was going to talk about in my opener because I was listening to NPR and uh, Ben Ryder, who uh, wrote an article in Sports Illustrated, he wrote about the Astros in 2014 who were like the losingest team in history or something like that. I think they lost twice as many games as any other team had. Won uh, 130 some games, lost 200 and some games. Um, and he, uh, he went in and interview interviewed them because they totally changed the composition of their team and their managers. They had a data scientist from NASA. They had a management consultant from Accenture, I think, uh, who came in, and, or General Motors, who came in and worked um, to manage the team. So baseball outsiders. And those baseball outsiders completely changed the rules about what they were doing. They didn't pretend that they were in it to win every single game that they played. They were in it for the long game. And so that really angered people. Um, but the other thing that they did is uh, they, they changed up how they were measuring success. It wasn't at a game by game interval. It was a three year interval and uh, with a plan to win the World Series in 2017, which is what Sports Illustrated, that journalist, predicted. And he got a lot of flack, and Sports Illustrated got a lot of flack. And guess what happened? They won the World Series in 2017, and they're predicted to win again next year. And the reason why, in part, was they said, everyone has access to all the same data today. So in baseball, all of the teams have access to all the stats of all the players. And we have the same in our, in our community as well. We, have, we all have access to the same data, all the same pricing. There's really not that much to buying at scale anymore. So the art for them was bringing back the old-fashioned scout and using their gut and intuition and the possibility that resided in those young players, which is what I think we have the opportunity to do now as well.